What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to work on adding our own Windows 11 machine to our home lab. So Windows 11 has been out for a little bit but you might not have a machine to install it on or you might have not bought a new PC yet so why not spin up a VM in our lab and get some practice working with it so you're prepared for work, school, or anything else you might need it for. So let's get started with it. So to start we're going to need the actual ISO image for Windows 11 so we can make a VM in our Proxmox server with it. So over here is the download link which I'm going to put in the description of the video so you can get it too. Or if you have it from an install you already have or something like that, no problem as long as you have an ISO image that you can add to Proxmox. So here's the download link. I already have it so I'm not going to download it again. But again the link is going to be in the description so you can get it if you need it. So we do need one more thing before we are all set to make our new Windows 11 VM. So we do need to come over here and get the vert IO drivers. So by virtualizing Windows, we need to add the drivers into it. So this is the GitHub, and if we come down here, there's the stable vert IO win ISO. These would be what you're gonna need. I already have them downloaded, so I'm not going to, but you can, and then add them to your ISOs, wherever you have them stored for your Proxmox host. So if I come back over to Proxmox, we're gonna make a new VM. And we're going to call it Barmine Tech Win 11. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select where my ISOs are. And here's my Windows 11 ISO. We're going to change the machine type to Windows. And we're going to use the latest version, 11 2022. I'm going to use the default options. And we're going to use SCSI for all these options. We're going to leave Q35. We're going to check off for the QEMU agent. We're going to use UEFI BIOS, we're going to use UEFI storage, which I'm going to use my local terabyte, and we also need a TPM for Windows 11, so we're going to make sure that that matches where we set the UEFI storage. So these two need to match, and we're going to use V2.0 for the version for the TPM. Come to the next one, we're going to change this to vert IO block, and then other than that we can just change wherever you want to keep it for your storage. Windows 11 requires about 64 gigs, so I'm going to give it 70 just to be safe. Other than that, everything else is good over here. I'm going to click next. I'm going to give it four cores. I'm going to change this to 1024. We're going to leave that at 4096. If you want to use more RAM, you can. This is a quick machine, so I'm just going to give it some basic resources. I keep ballooning on, so I'm able to not have the machine steadily use all the RAM, it gives it a little more space to play with. So that's just my option, but you can do whatever you want to do. Move on from here. And network I'm going to leave the same because I only have one network bridge. And we're going to use vert IO one more time. I just want to double check before I change everything. And I'm going to do change the, so we're going back to the CPU. I do want to use the host CPU. I have two Intel Xeon chips in this this machine, so I do want to use one of those as the actual pass-through for it. It just seems to work a little bit easier when I make my Windows 11 machines. Other than that, we should be good. I do not want to start it after it's created because we do need to add the Vert IO drivers. So I'm going to click finish. So now we can see the new machine is showing up and we do need to add one more thing to it. So we need to add the drivers. So I'm going to come to hardware, add CD DVD drive. We're going to select where my ISOs are and we can leave this IDE for this one. And I'm going to select my vert IO drivers. I'm going to add that and now we're all set to start the machine up. And you can see my machine is starting, it's showing the Proxmox logo so we're off to a good start. Ask me to press any key, so I'm just going to press a key so it passes through. See it's spinning, so we're doing something. So if you've done everything and made it to this point, you should have the Windows install screen here. So this is the normal in Windows install, and it's just like if you install it on any other machine. So we're going to click next, install now. And we can see the setup is starting, and it should pop up in a minute with another box for us to go through. In normal fashion, it's going to ask you for an activation key. Since I am using this in my home lab, I don't need it activated. Windows will let you work for a little bit without an activation key. They might limit some of your operations in the machine. But if you already have a Windows key, you could activate it here. 
but I'm going to click I don't have a product key. And it's going to come through here, and I'm going to select which version of Windows I want to use. I want to use Pro. Now, if you've got one of those pop-ups saying that the machine doesn't meet the requirements, you probably either don't have the TPM added properly, or you're missing enough storage. So I recommend either go back and change the window set the machine settings in Proxmox, or just try rebuilding it from scratch and just follow everything I did because then you should make it to this point. If you do have a Windows key that you're going to activate, make sure you activate the right version to the key you have. So if you have a Pro key, don't select Home. Or if you have an Education key, don't select Pro. Make sure your key matches whatever version you select here. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to click Accept. Next. We're going to do Custom. So now we need to load those drivers in. We're going to Browse. And now we have those drivers mounted so we can select them here. I'm going to use AMD64. Since we're on an AMD64 setting, and we're going to use the Windows 10 drivers. It, it just works, so just use that. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Next. And now it's going to load those in. So after these drivers load in, you'll now be able to see our disk, and here it is. And since there's also no network drivers, we're going to add those in too. So we're going to come back to find the drivers browse, we're going to come back to the DVD, and we're going to net KVM. We're going to open that up, and again we're going to select Windows 10, and we're going to do the AMD64. If you're on a different board type, use the other board type, but we focus on AMD64 for this channel. And we're going to click next again, and it's going to load those drivers in, so now I have my Ethernet drivers. So by adding these Ethernet drivers in now as the Windows installs, it'll actually be able to pull the updates during the install and have an internet connection. You can skip adding the drivers, but it's going to make it a little bit harder and you're going to have to bypass the internet connection to activate Windows. So just add the drivers now and make it easier. Click next again. And now we're going to do the Windows install. So this is going to take a little bit and it's going to restart a few times so just circle back every now and then to make sure everything looks good but it's going to take a little bit of time to re to do the install so we'll be back when it's all done and now if you made it through all the reboots and everything worked right you should come to the windows 11 screen and the setup so we're going to go through this real quick i'm in the us Uh, I'm, in the, I'm going to use the US keyboard. If you use a different one, change it to whichever keyboard format you use. I don't want to add a second keyboard, so I'm going to skip it. And now it's going to check for updates. So since we added the Ethernet drivers, it can actually look online and find the drivers that we're going to need the updates for it. So it's going to take a second, so we'll come back when this is done. After it gets its updates, it's going to ask you to name the device. So we're going to call it Barmine Tech. Right, next. And then we're going to go through some more Windows processes to set up a machine. So if you've set up a machine before, you probably are familiar with these. It takes forever. Uh, here's the machine restoring again. So when this comes back, we'll keep going. And again, after it comes back, we're going to get some more options for setup. So since I'm using this in my home lab, it's going to be for personal use. If you're setting this up for school or for work, you set it for work. But we're using it for personal use. Click Next. Uh, I don't want to sign in. So let's see how I can skip this. Here we look, sign in. So by adding the network drivers, now it makes Windows the install is going to be online, so it's trying to pull an account. You used to be able to bypass it, but it doesn't seem like you can. But what we're going to do to bypass it is do a at a.com. And then we're going to put in a password, so I'm going to use my good old password. We're going to sign in. And we're going to click next. But now it bypassed it, so now we can say who's going to use this computer. So Barmine is going to use this computer. Now this is going to be your sign-in password. So whatever password you want to use to sign in, use that. And we're going to confirm it. 
Again, this is your sign in password to log into the local machine, so make sure it's something you're going to remember. Or use a security question. You could set them with whatever you want. Again, this is for home lab, so hopefully you won't need the security questions. But if you do, make it something you're going to remember. And now I like turning everything off because I like some. Uh, I don't like everything to be sent to Windows. It's Microsoft when I make an install, so I try to turn all this off and I try to disable everything I can, especially since we're doing this for home lab. I'm going to accept this. And now it's going to check for updates again. So we'll come back when this is done. And now, if you made it to the screen, that means you did pretty good. So if you didn't, you're going to have to go back and try again, re recreate the VM, and try to follow the steps. Um, but if you were able to get through the Windows setup, I would hope you would have made it here too. So this is Windows 11. It's not the prettiest, but we're going to have another video of how to make it a little bit better. So we're going to close this out. We already have our network drivers, but we do need to add some other drivers to it. So we're going to open up File Explorer. We're going to go to the Vert I.O. drivers. And we're going to come down to the Vert I.O. Win GTX 64. And we're going to run these. So it's actually going to install all the rest of the drivers that we need for this PC. And make sure everything's checked off. Click Next, and we're going to install it. It's going to come up the UAC. We're going to accept that. And after this installs, we'll now have all the drivers we need for our Windows 11 machine to properly work. So if I come back here, so here it's all done. So if I go to Device Manager, and we see now everything works. There's no caution signs, everything has their drivers it needs. And Windows 11 is now working. So if you don't want to access it through Proxmox, you're probably not going to be able to uh, just hop on the machine. So we do need to R enable RDP so you can remote into this machine. So we're going to do remote desktop can settings and we need to turn it on. So you're going to turn it on, we're going to confirm it, and now we're actually able to remote into this desktop. So you should be able to hit it with the, the actual name if you're into RDP. Uh, this is going to keep popping up. It's going to be annoying. RDP. Should be able to hit the machine this way. And we did. So here's my credentials. It's going to ask me for the, because uh, it doesn't recognize the machine. We're going to click yes. And we're in the little RDP inception. But here we are. We're back into the actual machine. So this is our Windows 11 machine we just made. I can come down here, I can open up Edge, I can go on the internet, uh, everything, Windows just wants everything. So we can come up here, I can come to Yahoo, I can whack whack over to, I think this is it, maybe it's not. Should be able to access my network drives too. But uh, yeah, here's our Windows 11 machine. So it doesn't pop up right now that it needs to be activated, but it will at some point. But we have a fully functioning Windows 11 machine to mess with in our lab environment. So if you made it this far, you probably have a fully functioning Windows 11 machine now to practice with in your home lab. I've been using Windows 11 as a daily driver for me at work for about two months now, three months, and at first I was really hesitant, but I have to say I like it. Uh, I did change some things with it, which we could make another video about in the future to change the appearance to kind of make it feel like Windows 10 again. And it helps a lot because I wasn't crazy about the center taskbar and some of the design that they did to it. But I have to say Windows 11's worked pretty well. We use it on some of our machines at work, and like I said, I've been using it every day. Uh, I've adapted to it pretty well, so it's worked good. Uh, it's good to have practice on, so it's not a surprise if you get to work 
or if you get to school and you get hit with a Windows 11 machine and you've never seen it before. We have the home lab, we have the opportunity to virtualize machines, so we might as well do it. Uh, I did host this off my main server instead of my mini PC server. Your resources may vary on your mini PC server. Hopefully you have enough that you'll be able to dedicate enough to your Windows 11 machine. Uh, I don't know about you, your situation might be you might not keep it running 24-7. I keep my Windows 11 machine running 24-7 because it's always getting used for the most part. So I have enough resources on this PC, the server that I run to host it, but that's just something to keep in mind. You might not have 4 cores or 6 cores or 8 gigs of RAM or 12 gigs of RAM. You might only have 2 gigs of RAM to work with, so that's the minimum requirements for Windows, so it might not work as well. But it's just all things to keep in mind, and you could always upgrade your actual server box to get more out of it. So I hope you like the video, and stick around for the next one.